we got two videos now from two different agents of their first calls and they're like dude i cannot believe that these people talk to me like i'm already their agent yeah. like, is that normal and i'm like yeah that's what it's like every single time so So the big question is this, how do most agents who don't have access to the secrets that the top agents in our industry hoard to themselves grow and prosper in today's real estate environment? That's the question. And this video podcast is the answer. I'm Pat Hyben and welcome to Real Estate Rockstars. Real Estate Rockstars, this is Aaron Amuchastegui. I have a treat for you guys today. I get to interview Jesse, Jesse Dow and Jackson Wilkie. These guys refer to themselves as the YouTube agents. Now, here's the reason you should be listening. It is really baffling and crazy. So Jackson's been an agent for around 13 months. Jesse's been an agent for two and a half years. And over the next 12 months, they are projecting $50 million in sales. So the if you haven't been listening or you weren't sure if you were going to listen to this one, that is the biggest reason to listen. You can be a new agent just that far in and just be crushing it. So guys, how's it going? Thanks for joining me. Going great, man. Loving it, man. Thanks for having us. Awesome. And you guys are living up in, in Portland, Oregon. The What is shelter in place like in Portland? Is it a thing right now? Uh, yeah, I mean, it definitely is. Um, schools are closed down. It's pretty much um, same as, as the nation, but you know, it doesn't stop. Like it's not illegal to go out. There's actually some businesses open and for what we're doing and the COVID situation, what we're going to be talking about going forward and YouTube, it's exploding right now. So we're doing more videos than we've ever done. Um, and when we get with the team, we, we keep businesses and stuff, but, um, yeah, it's, it's kind of like the rest of the night. Huh? Yeah. Video is exploding right now. Like everybody <laughs> has, like if there was ever a time to be able to do it and, and also you know, not, and you guys will be the experts, but in my opinion, not even have to be the professional level that people were expecting before. Cause everybody's in their house right now. So if you're ever going to start a channel, like, or a page or something like now's the time, because you're going to get the least amount of judgment, uh, toward your videos. The, I, I, I would guess. There's never, so, never judgment in the, the value that people typed into a keyboard and searched. Um, that's, that's and I mean, we're already jumping ahead, but yeah, it's like dude, people are dying for information out there and engines um you know this the googles the youtubes and stuff if you're providing that information you can do it with your cell phone you can do it with a web camera it, it's all about what you're teaching in those videos that is going to be so awesome for us to get into and then so portland oregon it's like three to six three months out of the year is really really awesome weather right so the it's during the winter it just rains like crazy so are, right now are you in that awesome weather stage but you're supposed to stay inside it's been freaking nice the last few weeks we about yesterday today -ish, um but we had about two or three weeks of that mid 60s to mid 70s and you being klamath falls i mean you get that in the northwest it's like summertime so yeah we're definitely starting to get in the trees are blooming and it makes for killer video and b-roll <laughs> yeah that is awesome so the so let me so let's let's figure out um get started in real estate you know jesse you've been around for two and a half years mm -hmm. jackson just a little over a year how did you guys meet and, uh, and what has, what has evolved in the last two years for you guys in real estate? Yeah. So, um, so Jackson was, um, a title rep, uh, yeah. and I was selling real estate and actually I'd always, um, done title with another company. I would always do it. I was always doing title with a lawyer's title. And then I got this really big, uh, mansion listing in a different area that they didn't service. So, um, I opened up title with WFG, which is where Jackson worked. And then, um, he sent me this video message <clears throat> introducing himself. And I thought to myself, I was like, man, this is pretty cool that this, uh, t title rep reached out to me via video. Uh, no one else had ever reached out to me through video. And I was already like really interested in getting into the video space. So that's essentially like how we were introduced to each other. And then he, um, he actually ended up living by me and naturally just kind of like our friendship and business relationship grew from there. Uh, so the, so Jackson, what did, what software did you use for that video at the time? Was it just a text? Was it YouTube? Was it Bonjour, one of the apps that are out there? That's funny. It was actually, no, it was in shape. <laughs> so I was starting to mess with video. Um, and back, yeah, I'm not even from Portland, Oregon. I moved here um, now two and a half years ago. So didn't know anybody here. Didn't know title real estate, got into that, realized quickly that 
realtors wanted help with, I got, got super obsessed with it, started learning a bunch of apps. That one was InShot. So it's really good for any kind of lead gen or just database or whatever. So you can shoot a video and it's a free app. And then you can have like twisty little emojis on there. And and, and so I would just send that stuff to all the, you know, a bunch of agents and they, and they really did that. Um, so I was just using InShot, but yeah, as we progressed and started shooting video together, it was just free tools, uh, cell phones and, and iMovie to do videos. So then, and the way you guys work together, if I have it right. So Jesse, you manage most of the, you know, the real estate kind of production part of that. And the, and Jackson, you do a lot of the, you know, the online agency helping people grow their YouTube presence. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, to, to back this up, to really talk about what, how this really formulated was, yeah, I was a title rep for only for about 10, 10 months and then realized I needed to get to the other side. And we were really into this Gary V, Gary Vaynerchuk style videos, the local interviews of shops, restaurants, bars that we we're all told to do and realized quickly that we didn't get much business or any, actually it's never got an ounce of business from that. And that's what led us to this YouTube thing um, where I, I discovered SEO and what people were actually typing into the keyboard. So we started really experimenting with this. Um, we'll get deep into the weeds about YouTube and all that, but how it really formulated was, oh crap, this started coming in. The call started really coming in. And my mind doesn't work in a way that's very organized to close these deals, you know, and all these people call. So me and Jesse kind of like, okay, here's our strengths. Jesse can close these deals. He knows exactly how to work the, the systems of real estate. I'm going to go and, and kind of focus more on the lead gen. And that's, it just naturally happened this way to where I was really good at the YouTube videos and figuring that stuff out. And Jesse was going to close the deal. So that's how kind of our partnership really blossomed was um, two, two like opposite strengths, you know, together. He manages all the real estate. I was really diving deep into the, the YouTube marketing. That sounds like a great partnership being able to have, you know, somebody brings the business in the other one, the other one, uh, you know, puts it down. So, so Jesse, what have you guys done in revenue in the last year? How many houses have you sold average, you know, average sales price, that sort of thing. And what do you have projected for the next 12 months? Yeah. So the last 12 months, uh, um, I think we've closed in the last 12 months, we've done about 30 transactions and, and that probably is around 20 million. The thing is, is in the last couple of months, we've really expanded our team uh, since joining uh, EXP because we have like a very different business model where essentially um, we have our direct agents that work for us. And Jax and I are able to feed them off of our YouTube channel directly. Um, when someone calls in to our uh, centralized system, which we call the Hopper, it's a grasshopper app and it rings everyone our agents are able to answer that phone. What we do, they get 30% split, we get 70, but they're not doing any prospecting, no cold calling, no open houses, no door knocking, no nothing. Uh, and that works very well. They absolutely love it. They're working with hot leads. I think we put nine deals into escrow in the last two weeks and that's all through um, 100% YouTube and with zero prospecting involved. That's, that's crazy. So average sales price, like 700,000, 800,000? Yep. All yeah, right, we're, so we're gonna, average no, price point yeah. rents. Go ahead. Yeah, I think it's important to notice that, yeah, or note that in Portland, yeah, that's around four fifty. But our YouTube average price is in that you know seven hundred thousand dollar range. So we're definitely getting um, you know a higher price point too. So there's some tips and tricks on doing that and what you showcase. But yeah, there's another aspect to this too that is really exciting too. I mean, yes, we've we've really started closing a lot of deals on YouTube. But these people, when they call, they trust us so much that we're uh, we had kind of a nap grip that, that opened up to where, Hey, if you need to close on your house there to buy here, you know, are you, do you have your house there? And they're like, well, yeah, well, hey, we have the top real estate agent in your area. Communication's key. If you want to close same day, um, we really need that communication up. So we, we, you know, suggest you to interview this other agent. So we've given out over $12 million in listing referrals to um, agents in different States as well. They just trust us so much from these videos that, there's so much business to be had all the way around. So it gets you business in Portland, but it also gets you business in other places. People are trusting you with stuff and they're saying, hey, but what about in Arizona? And you're like, all right, we'll send you somebody. Yeah, yep. we always yeah, we always tell them that we have a channel partner. Even one agent, uh, Kenny Trong, fast agent down in San Francisco, he uh, we've given him uh, about $6 million in listing referrals in the last six months. Just from your YouTube page. So the, so, and as we unwrap that a little bit, so you're getting, people are hitting your YouTube page. You're sharing these stories. You're going to tell us how to, how to do that. Mm -hmm. Then they call your incoming 
phone line and it's, yep. you know, Grasshopper is one of those apps that it rings 10 people at the same time. So whoever, whichever one of your agents that works with you in EXP, whoever answers the phone gets that lead, but they're in a race to answer the phone because hey, it's an incoming person that is a hot lead. So like, no, I want to answer it. They get it. They get 30% of it. You guys get 70% of it. Did I re-explain that right? Yeah. So that's, that's kind of uh, that's what we've done for our direct buyers agents. Now, these are the people that we brought on with us from our previous brokerage. The thing was, is uh, Jackson and I both made an agreement that we would never start a team until we were actually able to provide a lot of uh, business because I came from a team environment where I was doing all my own prospecting, cold calling, door knocking, open houses, and I was getting nothing from my brokerage in return as far as business goes. And that just drove me nuts. So I knew that we could provide a substantial amount of business, but we needed to figure it out first. So now what we've been able to do is, you know, if an agent wants to, um, you know, partner with us and join our downline at EXP and say they're a top producing agent, but they want to focus on a different area or a different um, niche, like say it's commercial, a Spanish channel or commercial or um, say luxury, luxury, we give them their own playlist inside of our channel and we give them a different number that links to their channel or their playlist and that way, when somebody's watching them, they call them directly and we split those leads uh, 50-50. Then the agent, everything that they bring in on their own, we let them keep 100%. We just do all their post-edit production and all that stuff. All right. So let's so let's dig in on that. So somebody goes to your YouTube page. What's the YouTube page called and and what do they see there? What are people going to find there? It, we'll get into SEO after, but just what's, what is the content you've got? Yeah, that's the biggest thing right there is what they see immediately. It's called Living in Portland, Oregon, um, which was a name that I uh, had derived after a few months um, of not being named Living in Portland. It was just our Real Agent Now team. That was our team name. But when you go there, you had no idea what that was or it was another agent selling you. So when you go to this page, the first thing you see is that big channel art because if someone stumbles on your video, now they're going to go into creep mode. They're going to so, you know, go to your channel and kind of see what's up with this. Do I want more information from this per person or not? So when you get there, the first thing you see is, Hey, tap subscribe to learn everything about living in Portland, Oregon, nothing else. There's no names, no numbers, no we're agents, no nothing. And then we've built the single greatest website for, for Portland, Oregon, where now they can scroll through and you're allowed to have up to 10 playlists on your homepage of YouTube. And so We've taken long tail keywords, SEO keywords like, you know, living in Portland, moving to Portland, Portland, Oregon weather, Vancouver, Washington, Salem, Oregon, luxury real estate in Portland, uh, new construction real estate in, in Portland. So those are all individual playlists. So let's say you want luxury, but the next person wants Vancouver, Washington. Everybody has their own uh, flavor per se, you know, we're like the Baskin Robbins of, of real estate. So they can come there and find exactly what they want. That's what you'll see on our homepage. All right. So the, so do you think that everybody in their town, they should go start a YouTube page that says, you know, living in, living in Austin, Texas, living, you know, do you think, <laughs> is that the, is that one of those ultimate hacks or do you think it's unique to every city? No, it's definitely, um, it's kind of a hack slash unique, but it was something that I, I had thought of and it's actually searched 2,900 times a month. So now if you type that into YouTube, the number one thing that pops up is not only, you know, a bunch of our videos, but our channel. So you will see this wave when you start looking at, at some of these other markets, YouTube channel names living in. And we definitely trailblazed that and started that. We have, you know, um, another YouTube channel where we teach agents. We have Facebook groups and all that. And so <laughs> the wave has started of the living in channels for sure. I'm going to go start a few living in channels today. The uh, So I just, yeah, I went to YouTube. I typed living in Portland, Oregon. I see your guys' page at the top. I the see page, latest from not even a Portland. video. How cool is that? Like our freaking right. page. It's just your face is right at the top. Somebody searches living in Portland, Oregon. Now you're at the very top. Yep. That it's searched 2,900 times. The next ones, it's got some different videos uh, yep. that are on there. Your guys' faces are on most of them. The, uh, you know, really the pros and cons. You've, you've even got the rain as one of the yeah. cons on one of the videos that I see that. All right. So the, so now I see that that's, that's what happens when they come in, they go to your page and you were talking channels. So the, um, so as somebody has different things, so you go to your channel under the page and there is a channel that says, you know, living in Seattle, Washington, uh, so is that what you're talking about with the channels, like the ones that you guys follow? That's or, a separate channel. Up? Yeah, that's a separate channel that we built because nobody was doing it there. We're three hours apart. So we've built that channel that that produces um, leads. We are licensed in Washington, but obviously we're not going to go work up in Seattle. So we have another team member up there who lives in Seattle. Closing oh, the so playlist. That's the other thing. You the playlist. You, YouTube are, has yeah. your home, your videos and a playlist. So a playlist can have 
a category. So living in Salem, Oregon, living in Portland, Oregon, I can see yeah. a few full playlist. And now there's 20 videos about living in Portland. If I click, you know, living in Salem, Oregon, hopefully I don't search. That's, my sound. Yeah. That's me. our very first one we just released yesterday. So to so go back one I, on that playlist. Yep. Because that's, a, this is so cool about this is like, now we have these agents who are like, Oh my gosh, guys, I just have to be a piece of your team. Like, I just want to be a part of you. I love what you're doing. We've got podcasts, we got YouTube channels. And so now instead of bringing people on who already are experienced real estate agents and then having them give us a piece of their business, we've joined EXP strategically. And, and obviously, I mean, just the brokerage alone has helped us explode, but now these people can join us in our downline. We build them out a separate playlist. The number it goes to them. Anything that comes in through YouTube, we split 50, 50 with them. And then the rest of their business that they've been working their butts off for, they keep a hundred percent. So, I mean, what, what better value proposition is that? So that's how we're getting like top producers now to come join us because they want to get on YouTube. They don't know how to start, do it. And it's a lot of freaking work. You're saying join us. We'll give you your own playlist under our big Dude, I'll, I'll do it for you. I love this stuff. I'm, you know, I'm the master. Let's build your brand. We give them the opportunity to come into our studio. If they want to build a podcast about knitting sweaters, it doesn't matter. We're going to teach them how to build their own brand through podcasting. All. But with the YouTube stuff, Hey, we're going to take care of you. We're, we know exactly how these videos need to be done. I know which titles, I know all the metadata and stuff. You know the area. So if we want to do Kalamath Falls, like I'm going to get you because you know it like the back of your hand. I don't have to go and try and figure this stuff out. You can tell stories in your videos and then that allows us to really expand. So I w I've been saying it lately. I think I'm changing the channel name from living in Portland, Oregon to just living in Oregon as we continue yeah. to grow and grow and grow. Yeah, living in Oregon, then your playlist will be part of and it. Oregon. And Oregon, yeah, the coast. Just get it. Why not? Real estate rock stars. This is Aaron Amuchastegui. And as you know, when you've been hearing these episodes, so many of our guests give us lots of free gifts and share the tools they've been using to become successful. We've got free real estate tools, scripts, eBooks, marketing materials, and more. We keep track of everything in our vault and it's updated with new items each and every week. If you want access to that stuff, it's totally free for being a listener. All you have to do is go to agentsuccesstoolbox.com, agentsuccesstoolbox.com and get your free gifts now. So if somebody's getting started, so they went, mm -hmm. do you have like a list of steps or recommendations? So, cause when I see like the channel for living in Beaverton, you've got weather, you've got places yeah. to eat. There's a whole lot of videos on that playlist. So if somebody was going to start focusing and say, Hey, I'm going to start a YouTube page today. I'm going to name it living where I live. Yep. I'm going to start my playlist. What, what are the first videos they should record? How should they get started? Yeah. Number one video out of the gate is cost of living video. Um, doesn't matter which student, which anybody does that or whatever channel we start, that video tends to always just crush it. When somebody's moving or looking to move to an area, I mean, to know how much it costs, it just, it, it's a very good video that uh, gets a lot of traction. Pros and cons videos are very good. So, you know, three or four pros of, about living in your area and three or four cons about living in your area. People like truth. They like honesty. Um, and that's what really personalizes you. It's but, three in-betweens. Yeah. And then, I did, um, yeah, three in betweens. Like, kind of, you could take this either way. Like, hey, in Oregon, weed's legal. So, for some people, <laughs> that might bug you. For some, hey, you, now you can have weed legally. So, um, definitely, That's a little of both. You've got one that says, "Don't move to the wrong area." Yeah, that a, a whole a whole video about the the worst neighborhoods. Yeah, basically, and it, we definitely don't do any like steering, but hey, we just pull up statistical data that's on like the red fins, the um, or, like actual stats that we'll read off and be like, that's why this area actually has uh, lower areas has um, a higher unemployment rate. So, I mean, that's what actually signifies it as worst place. So, so somebody, yeah, we do we do everything. So they can go start their YouTube page. They can start with their first videos. And if they have more than one city, they can do a playlist for each city or each neighborhood or topics and everybody will find that. How do you guys get, so you said Portland has the average price is 450 and your average price is 750 or 800. How do you get the top end of the market? Why, why is that because the people that are searching organically on YouTube are the top end or is it the content that you guys put out? Yeah, it's definitely going to be a mix. And I do want to say something first real quick about how to get started with YouTube. You cannot physically start on YouTube if you don't do keyword research. So I just wanted to get that in first. There's a tool out there called Keywords Everywhere. It's an extension for your computer that turns your Google search bar into basically a gold mine. So it's going to start telling you how many times things are searched a month. That's how you know which videos to shoot. 
Um, we've had agents come on with three, four, 500 videos on our YouTube channel and have maybe 12, 15 subscribers. So it goes to show that doing open house videos, listing videos, home tour videos with addresses and stuff, they never get searched. You'll never grow. So um, I, I would kind of want to put that back, you know, as growing, you really need to put in some effort to keyword research. So then, then we started thinking about, okay, do, we're doing all these videos, but now we want to kind of start showcasing some of these areas, but where do we want to work? First of all, and second of all, kind of what's our niche, you know, where, where do we know Jesse's very good at luxury and investors and some of these high end areas. He did a lot of luxury listings. So the guy can talk about it all day, every day. So we really started embracing that. And me, I just moved here, family of, you know, I got three kids, wife. So I'm in that move up that, that four or five bedroom house. So we're talking, you know, better areas, neighborhoods that, that can get you those style of homes. And at the end of the day, the people that call us are, are kind of our best friends. So that's how we went about, you know, hey, we're going to talk about these areas, these nicer areas, stuff that we really know well. And that's the, the business that we're attracting. All right. So the, and Jesse, had you done a bunch of, you had focused mostly on luxury before. And so naturally you could talk about it more. Um, I would say the, uh, you know, I did, I, I didn't, that wasn't a majority amount of my business, but I mean, I definitely loved it. I love the price point. I had always, um, you know, when I was on the team and that's like one thing I really thought I noticed when I moved brokerages is that where I originally started at Keller, I was always kind of in that 300 to, you know, low 400 range. Uh, when I went to my new brokerage, it was actually in a very strategic move for me to move up into an area where the price points were higher. And that just kind of like naturally allowed me to see and be around that environment. So, um, I wouldn't say I was fully focused on luxury, but I did have a healthy part of my business was luxury. And I really focused on a specific area too. Um, it's a gated community. There's about 60 houses in there. I sold a decent amount in there. And uh, that's where that all stemmed from. But in our area, like where our previous brokerage was up in that neighborhoods, I mean, you're looking at six, seven, eight hundred, nine hundred thousand to a million dollar price points. So it wasn't very uncommon to deal with those houses. And for me, I think of like, if someone's like, what type of business do you typically deal with? Like to me, just like an average house for me is about 700. So did, did you guys have luxury homes as a playlist? Is that or is it metadata yeah. or the... We do because what we did is we just actually, we brought in a top producing real estate agent from uh, Keller uh, to join us at EXP. And we are, he wanted to get into the luxury business. So we actually crafted him a luxury playlist and we're turning him into the luxury specialist of Portland through our YouTube channel. And it's going to take his business to the next level. So if somebody wants to focus on, you know, vacation homes somewhere, or they want to focus on, you know, luxury rentals, or they want to focus on your military housing, whatever it is. You think somebody can, you know, if, if an agent can decide this is my niche and they can build a brand around it on YouTube, they could focus with a playlist with metadata and be able to decide what their favorite niche becomes. Oh, a hundred percent. And the reason why is because what you want to do is you, 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 you want to put yourself in front of the people that are actually searching that information. So if you know, you're moving to Las Vegas or New York city, guess what? You're on YouTube and you're using it as a search engine. Now you're typing in those cities if all of a sudden the Skype's popping up that has nothing related to real estate, but he's teaching you all about the city. But now all of a sudden you also know he's a real estate agent. Guess who you're going to go to your home needs. You're going to the person that you're watching, which happens to be us. And we get calls all the time with people saying, man, I was thinking of moving to Austin or Portland. I found your channel and you guys are the ones that made us make that decision to move into Portland. So if you are a niche, say you're in Colorado Springs and you're focusing on the military business you could definitely create a military uh, YouTube channel about living in you know Colorado Springs, and you would get tons of military business. We actually have a lot of clients and students that uh, do focus on niches. Yeah, I think so it's the, super important. I'll piggyback off that because the hardest struggle people are having, no matter how much we teach them with YouTube, is the content. Like, okay, I got, I got these SEO titles, but I don't know what to say. Well, that's because you ha you haven't niched yourself. If you're trying to shotgun spread and do you know everything we're doing. Um, first of all, you got to put in a little effort and and do some research. But second of all, like when you come across on your videos, like I can sit there and talk move up home buyers and families and kind of stuff all day, every day because it's my life. It's what I do. It's what I enjoy. So when you're able to niche down to something that you really know really, really well, like it's it's no longer a script. It's no longer a phony video. It's it's it, you know, once you start telling stories through YouTube, and that's one thing that was hard for me is like, I wanted to do this Portland channel. And here I am trying to talk about Portland. Like I know it. Well, I had just moved here 
at the time a year, year and a half, you know, so I barely knew some of these neighborhoods. Um, and the, the more I started telling my story about moving there, I was starting to see the comments and the like, oh my gosh, this is great. So then I started doing videos about what it was like to move uh, to Portland, what, what it's like to live there after a year, all of these, like my story videos. And it just started blowing up kind of my personal niche and brand. And, you know, the families were calling me and I'm telling them it's hard to find daycare here in Portland because there's so many families. And so now the calls I get are like, Jackson, thank you so much for, um, you know, telling us to find our daycare. It took us two months to find it. So thank you so much. We're moving there in a couple months or, you know, and then Jesse per se, I mean, the guy's a, just a statistical um, database, dude. And he can just run stats about these houses. So like investors, luxury people, they're calling him left and right, young professionals, business people. So yeah, once you start niching and, and talking about the stuff you already know, love all that stuff, that's when you can do some killer videos. Yeah. Cause you, people know, like if you're faking it, and mm-hmm. that's the thing is we're hundred percent ourselves and that's why people love it. Jackson loves drinking beers. He talks about it all the time. People always hit us up and they're like, Hey, we're going to come to Portland. We want to have a brewski with Jackson. Yep. Um, you know, and someone made him a YouTube uh, hat that said brewski with the play button on it. So that's freaking awesome. I it's talk like about you- brewskis in every video and they just like, <laughs> and they're I, and it's that's like, your, calls it's like me. your automatic hashtag. They're, they're so ready to, they, when, when you have your fans that want to come party with you when, when really you're trying to teach them about real estate, that is, that is pretty awesome. And we, so, uh, oh, I was going to say one last thing to that is we, as we bring these agents on, they're still in the mindset that you got to qualify these clients. And we, we we're just reading in Inman the other day that it says that now are now buyers and sellers are pros, are qualifying you before you're qualifying them. So that's the greatest thing about YouTube is they know that they want to work with us when they call us. So we have these agents that come on our team and then when they get a call from a, a buyer or seller, they're still prospecting them. Like they're, you know, they've been tricked into calling and these, so it's funny to hear the agents talk to them because, uh, these guys actually want to work with them. And we got two videos now from two different agents of their first calls. And they're like, dude, I cannot believe that these people talk to me. Like I'm already their agent. Like, is that normal? And I'm like, yeah, that's what it's like every single time. So they're blown away. And these are like, (laughs) these are high end clients, not just, you know, someone calling like with no, with crappy credit, buying a $300,000 house. I'm talking 700 plus and they need to do a buy sell and they trust you with everything. It's, It's the greatest thing on earth. It's a totally different lead type. Right. Mm-hmm. So, th- so this lead type is somebody you guys have been yourselves. You've been saying, this is who we are. They've been getting to know you. They've seen all of your videos. So by the time they're calling, they're like, Hey, I already know you. Um, let's do this. Or, Hey, I already know you. I already know you're going to do the listing. Let's just get started. It, it is one of the funny things about you know, social media too. If they've been watching these personal videos where you guys are just out and about when they called, you know, it's like, they act like they know you already oh. because they feel like they've been having these conversations yeah. and speaking directly to them. So let's, Let's talk metadata. So you said at the beginning, somebody forms their YouTube site, they start recording videos, they start their playlists, the, but you said, but they need to get the searches. So yeah. I, I need to make sure that, I mean, this, this podcast for sure on our YouTube page needs to be hit more than any other time because you guys are the YouTube agents. So, the, so I better see a gazillion downloads on my YouTube page. What am I going to put in for metadata? Now, originally you said there's, a, there's an app you can use to see what people are searching. So remind us what that is. And then how do people turn that into metadata? And if they're brand new in YouTube, do they, do they put that on there when they upload the video? Where does, where does that stuff go? Yeah. So the, the whole metadata is basically the, what's triggering the algorithms of YouTube. So when someone types something into a computer, like where to move or where to live when moving to Portland, Oregon or something, right? So fractions of seconds, YouTube is going through and, and researching all this metadata. And so a title has to be perfect, right? So once you find this title, um, you know, we did one the other day, which is a great one anybody can do in their city, basically, is like moving to Portland, Oregon, seven tips on how to save money. So, um, you know, it has a couple triggers in there. Obviously, moving to Portland is a giant keyword. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and I'm going to, um, you have a description. So that kind of explains your video. And the biggest mistake people do is they'll either just put their number there or another link to go somewhere or nothing, right? Well, that's a huge area for you to start um, implying and putting a bunch of these other keywords. And so you need to take your title, put it right into your description. So now you now YouTube sees, okay, someone typed in living in Portland, Oregon. It's in this title. It's in this description. And then the description goes on and you talk about, yes, this whole video is about, you know, seven tips on moving to Portland, Oregon. Yada, yada, yada. You do a paragraph and then you have your tag section. 
So tags are another way that YouTube goes through and starts filtering. So by putting a bunch of random tags that don't make sense to your title, that really hurts you and kills you. You need to take that title again and put it as your first tag. Now you've told YouTube, hey, there's three freaking, you know, huge indicators right here that tell tells, you know, YouTube, this is exactly what this video is about. So when someone types that in, you have a really good chance now to have your video start peaking up towards the top. Um, and this is just getting going. So as you go, you're going to want to start, it's called optimization, optimizing your videos. There's a lot of the top YouTubers and YouTube channels out there who do not optimize correctly. And so you have a chance to outrank them, even if they have 500,000 views or a million subscribers. But then at the end of the day, nothing, your, your videos tend to drop out, um, until you get consistent. So the number one thing you can do in YouTube is be consistent, um, doing at least a video a week, multiple videos every single week so that it knows you're a, a serious creator and then it continues to put you out there. So, so there's a lot more that keeps so people on. You can't on, just but, do the metadata and all that. You also need to have a ton of videos keep yeah. doing it because they rank you all sorts of ways. So one of your videos, so it's, it's titled Cost of Living in Portland, Oregon versus Seattle, Washington. So that must have been a search that someone did that you said, hey, this is going to get some people here. And yep. then um, the comment below, or the, the description says, this is the best video talking about the cost of living in Portland, Oregon versus Seattle, Washington. So that's exactly what you said. So you have the title and then now your description says, it says but it also says best video. Cause I think you're thinking maybe somebody's searching best video of this. So now you're a step closer. So now you get down to your tags as you're uploading that. Do you have three tags, 50 tags, 500 tags? Like, cause there's, Cause there's kind of like an, un, maybe there's an unlimited, unlimited amount. I've never used so many tags in YouTube that I filled yeah. up. So and I think probably people maybe start running out. So what is the rule of thumb for that? Should they, you know, you said your first one would be cost of living in Portland, Oregon versus Seattle, Washington, but what mm -hmm. else do you put in there? How many tags do you do? How do you figure out what those tags should be? Yeah. The easiest way there's another tool um, called TubeBuddy, And so this is another extension and it actually works with YouTube. So that's, it has its own keyword explorer that's pulling data from the, the search bar of YouTube. And the cool thing about that, if you pay for it, which is only like 19 bucks a month, and it's literally the golden tool if you want to grow a channel, um, you upload your video and you put your title in there and it's going to upload a bunch of tags for you that are the most relevant, most related, or that any of the other videos that are in that search pool, the most common tags that are in those videos too. So now you can just go through and start selecting those. Um, and yes, there is a That's limit. YouTube you can, buddy, you said? It's Tube Buddy, T U B E, Tube Buddy. Um, now there is a limit. You can only put 500 characters in your tags, but they have to be relevant. So, like, you know, Vancouver, Washington, and all these other tags, if you're just trying to put a bunch of random tags, it actually can hurt you. So, you're going to have Seattle, Seattle, Washington, Seattle, WA. Uh, Portland, Portland, Oregon, Portland, or pros and cons of Seattle versus Portland, living in Portland versus Seattle. So a bunch of these really, really related tags that if anybody kind of searches something close to it, it has a good chance of slamming your video up there too. Got it. Okay. So the, so you tell people create the page, have the good name, create the videos, create the playlist that people are searching the individual video, you put the content, you put the extra things. There's some apps that people can use. The mm -hmm. and I think that we'll, you know, we'll get into some of the the kind of the gifts you guys are uh, are, are uploading that we're going to be able to get out of the toolbox. But as people want to get you know just more and more um, out of there, there's if, there's some different apps and things like that that people can use. Uh, we'll put those in some of the show notes too, just so people have them. I might be emailing you guys after to be able to grab that. So you guys have created you know this this awesome channel you know, where all the organic stuff comes in. And I think before we got online, I talked about the, the data that I did yesterday uh, with Trevor from Carrot that's coming out on our state of the market um, or may have come out by the time this one airs. The talks about how organic traffic the has like a 5% conversion rate, five and a half. So that means somebody Googles, they find you, you know, you know, 5% of them are saying, I want you to sell my house. Or paid ads it's more like one and a half percent. So if somebody is buying an ad in YouTube, their conversion rate is going to be like one and a half percent of people, whereas if they find you that. So the so what do you guys think about paid ads versus organic? I mean, obviously organic's better. Do you recommend that people start with paid ads as they're first getting started? Is it a are you guys anti paid ads? What's the difference between paid ads and organic? Yeah, we're we're anti. <laughs> yeah. um, there's nothing more powerful on planet Earth than organic search. This is 
people are typing this stuff in, you're doing the correct titles, tags, and people are finding your videos. They're not getting hit or bombarded with anything. We went down the road of 100% organic and then it was, okay, you know, this is like, if we're getting this many views, subscribers calls, what if we start boosting it, you know? And so I'd already know, I, I'd done some data on like, if, if another huge algorithm that you need to know about YouTube is average view time. So you have to keep people on the platform of YouTube. If you do not, they're not going to um, take care of you. So by doing a bunch of, by doing a YouTube ad and getting our video out now getting hundreds, if not thousands of views, like all the time, we were only getting three second force at five, 10 second view times. So YouTube's sitting there going, oh shoot, like nobody likes this video, we're gonna stop. It literally took all our videos and slammed them out of the rankings. So it was not effective. YouTube ads are very effective if done correctly. And if you unlist that video, do not do it to a public video, it will kill you. Um, but then, yeah, that was a quick little experiment. That's, that's we did great advice. Time. So if you're gonna run an ad, don't do it to one of your public ones, do it to an unlisted one. And there's so much to that ad. You have five seconds generally because of that skip to catch them. So there's such a script and there's a very, very uh, in-depth script that we use for organic videos too, that we can get into. But yeah, dude, this is a hundred percent organic. Now, now look at these numbers. We have literally over two and a half million impressions. So what that means is that in basically 13 months from when we've started this, YouTube has placed our videos in front of two and a half million people, most likely to watch our content. Um, so it's going out there and people who watch it, it finds people most like them. So obviously the more videos you do, the more content you do, the better it gets. Um, those videos that, um, when people actually get hit with a video, either through suggested or browse features, which means, Hey, you were typing stuff kind of like this. And then I think you're going to like these videos. Those videos have, um, an average of six and a half minute view times, whereas organic search where they just find us, type it in, click it is usually around like the three forty five, three minute, 45 seconds. So almost double, if you're allowing YouTube to just place your videos, the only way to do that is to get more consistent, get lots of videos out there, have your tags, your data, all this stuff in there so that YouTube can start. So then it goes all the way back to these YouTube ads. If you're doing a bunch of public videos um, and, and boosting those out there, your average view times are just, it's never going to reward you. So yes, we are hundred percent organic. Let this thing put our videos out in front of two and a half million people all day. Hell yeah. That's where I want to live. Yeah. So how, uh, how long should someone's video be? They're going to start well, on YouTube yeah. tomorrow. The should, five minutes. I like, minutes? we like the 10 to 12 um, or longer. It's sometimes seven, eight minutes, you know, it just is what it is. But that's the biggest misconception again, is that we're in this Facebook, Instagram world as realtors and you have to have a 30 second catchy video. Well, nobody searched that. Nobody cares. You need long videos because YouTube has came out and said that it, it favors a video. Let's say I do a 10 minute video and you do a three minute video. I get 40% average view time and you get a hundred percent. That means my video kept somebody on the platform for four minutes. You kept them on there for three minutes. It's going to boost my video in front of yours. So Longer, the better. Um, Jesse, Jesse did a 40 minute presentation, on our YouTube agent channel the other day, and we're getting like nine to 10 minute average view duration. So that's only, um, you know, 25% view time, average view time, but that's nine to 10 minutes that we're keeping people on this platform. So it's going to rank that. So, so YouTube likes you. Longer, so the, yeah. So Jesse, let's jump to some real estate kind of focus questions. So the, and again, you guys have been, you know, working for, you know, for not very long, right? You haven't been in the business for that long. You guys have teams that do a, a lot of that different, you know, production for you. So when the, when your agents are first getting started, what's one of their biggest, or, or what, what's one of the biggest problems in real estate right now that occur after somebody gets the lead? So it's obvious you guys use YouTube to get the lead, but what about, what are people saying after that? What do you, what does your team need after that? Now that you have this lead, what are people doing right? What are they doing wrong? Yeah. So like Jackson said, is like, we have a very specific script on getting people to call us. Like before we were doing videos for, we did the Gary Vee stuff for three months, six, four months. Then we started doing, then we got really focused and started figuring out like what was building up the views. Well, we never were telling people to call us. So now we hit them with that little bit of a, that hook at the beginning to tell them what the video is like. We go into like our static intro that we have in every video and then we go into our call to action, which is basically, you know, we're working with clients all around the world and we absolutely love it. So text us, call us, email us anytime, day or night. We got your back. I'm moving to Portland, Oregon. Literally the next day, our phone rang eight times. <clears throat> then we knew it was game on. 
now uh, people call us all the time and we do still see a lot of people out there doing videos without the call to action and they say they're getting no results and we know why and we tell them and try to uh, coach them through that and it still doesn't change but the biggest issue that i see with our um with our agents is that you know when the call comes in we instantly want to get that client on a zoom call because it really solidifies that relationship and it we get them on the zoom call with our lender so i would say the biggest uh issue i think is getting the initial call set with the lender because a lot of times sometimes clients don't want to um get on that zoom call if they're skeptical of first time home buyer or whatnot so when we're giving so much business away to these agents that don't have to do any prospecting or learn scripts or anything like that i think they don't know how to handle those situations like when somebody's giving them pushback so that so that works for youtube videos or any other way so somebody gets an incoming call agent calls you and says or a buyer calls you and says, Hey, I, I think I'm ready to buy a house. I saw you guys from this, or I saw your ad, or my friend told me you were a good agent. Um, I I'm looking for somebody to help me buy a house. Can you be my agent to help me buy the house? And you also mentioned that people right now are qualifying the agent. So there's, there's some of that. They may be just trying to see if you're good or not. So what is that first conversation? If you answer the phone, they say, Hey, so-and-so told me you're going to be my agent. Uh, I'd like to be able to buy a house. Um, can you, can you go show me some houses this weekend? So, yeah, so what, what's your answer? So our answer is always, um, the, the conversation is always like, I've been watching you guys on YouTube. I freaking love what you're doing. It's the same exact conversation every time. So, oh my God. It's actually you. Yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> we just saw it. We just saw a text come in asking, is this really Jackson Wilkie's number? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, um, that literally just happened like five minutes ago. I just saw yeah. it come through. But, uh, so what happens is we just say, Hey, uh, we're, we're really busy right now. Um, you know, we, we, need to schedule a zoom call when are you available you know or we send them our zoom link uh, that links to our calendly and then they can get that scheduled because what we want to do is we want to get them on the on a zoom call with our lender partner and so addison our lender has been an instrumental piece of this whole business from the very beginning so he's on 100 percent of our zoom calls he our meetings with uh zoom take president over everything else that he does so when we schedule the call he's going to be there whether it's five in the morning or 10 o'clock at night because we're working with clients all around the world so if so the do you client, lose do you lose people at that point you're like hey i uh, know i can't show you this weekend but let's get a zoom call scheduled so we can do it Dude, we literally have just rate? we've just lost our first client ever uh to that situation where he hit us up he just said hey i'm, I'm wanting to look at some homes in portland he didn't say he was coming to town because we've had people show up to our office uh, that came from like Florida and thought we would just be sitting in our office doing nothing. Well, obviously that's not the case. So yeah. we, in our videos too, we always say hit us up because we, you know, we want to set a, uh, this specific process. So this is another point of like the agent owning the process and helping their client direct them because as soon as we can get them on that zoom call, the guard comes down hundred percent and we can start working with them like a real client. So if somebody just basically says that they don't want to do the zoom call or they're anti zoom call, we just, and they ask us why we need to do it. And now with this COVID thing, it's really opened up the floodgate to zoom because we were doing zoom for the last year. I, yeah, I guess, I guess you'll get way less pushback now oh, yeah. than you used to. So, um, you know, we always just say, Hey, we want to just confirm that you're not a serial killer uh, or things like that. And you know, a Craigslist killer. And they kind of think it's funny. They're like, Oh, that totally makes sense. Sometimes people don't have video messaging, which we totally get, but typically 99% of the people figure it out. But like I was saying, we just lost our first uh, deal where the guy came to town. He didn't tell us he was, he made his trip out here. He wanted to set the appointment. We set up for the following week. And then he sent us an email on Tuesday morning saying, Hey, I was in town. I went out and uh, contacted an agent. He showed me the house. We wrote an offer. I don't know if it's true or not, but that's what happened. Um, but usually we're, we're pretty available. Uh, our policy is we try to get them on the call that day. And usually it works out. So that's a one off situation. Well, so overall, it's good practice for you. You're saying like if somebody calls their prospects, say, hey, let's get on a Zoom call right now. Let's get on a Zoom call with a lender. And the and I would think that you would lose some people like that. And, and the answer really is like, no, you haven't. Like you have lost one. But in general, no, people do get on that call. And so yeah. when you get on that call, what is what's the lender's job? What's your job? How long is that video call? That onboarding call? Yeah, absolutely. So like the um, we never tell them the lender is going to be on there. We just say, hey, let's set up the Zoom call. We make it very casual. And then when they get on the call, uh, we just introduce everyone. Usually it's our buyer's agents that take care of the calls. We're, uh, we're usually not, we try to be on there every time we can be. 
uh, Jackson doesn't handle any of that stuff. It's probably primarily me, but Addison, our lender is very good at controlling those conversations. So what happens get on the call, Hey, uh, introduce everyone. And then Heather are one of our buyers agents. She, uh, really good at controlling the conversation. Why are you moving to Portland? What's bringing you out here? And we just basically had the conversation flow. Like we never talked to them before anyways, because, you know, we're getting bombarded so much that we don't know, we can't track every single person. And what one thing that we do too, is we record the video, we send that to them, tell them to download it because it's going to get deleted. So therefore they can always reference back to that video because 90% of the questions, and a lot of people know this, if you're an agent listening, is that 90% of the people calling you uh, are typically not qualified. They've maybe spoken to a lender, but usually their conversation typically always leads to lending questions, how much they can afford. They don't know. So it's amazing to have that lender there with you on every call to build that relationship with someone. We've 95% of our clients have has used our lender uh, in every situation. And if they can't use them for some specific reason, say they're moving from Canada and they have no American credit, he still works with the client and helps us get the deal in the contract. So we currently have about 50 active buyers that he's working with. And he was telling me the other day that he's done 150 Zoom calls this year with clients because now he's adopted Zoom to his business. Yeah. So the so a lot of that beginning one, that first onboarding call is like, hey, yeah, we look forward to, to working with you. Let's get on a Zoom call. You get on there, you record it, you answer a bunch of questions, and you just start from the beginning, just getting to know them. And I think a lot of agents have that practice. Like, all right, tell me why you want to buy a house, when you want to buy the house. Mm-hmm. How long, how long do the video calls go? They're usually about 30 minutes. We, um, we try to, we always, uh, cause zoom has a free, uh, a free platform that you can use and it kicks you off at 40 minutes. Yeah. So typically, uh, not anymore. It does not kick you off anymore. Oh, okay. Co- cool. COVID lets people, but during COVID it's like free zoom for everyone, but okay. But go well, ahead. I'm, Sorry. I'm getting, so you're saying I'm getting ripped off. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> I have webinar features and all that stuff. So no, they uh, try to uh, keep it around 30 minutes or so. Sometimes it extends a little bit longer. It really depends on the client. Cause some clients love talking. Some mm-hmm. like telling you their whole life story. Some don't say anything. Um, and then, uh, you know, by the end of that conversation, then there's a follow-up email set that we put them in, you know, we tell them that we're going to build them a custom search, which through the CRM is something we naturally do. We figure out if they need to sell a house, every person that tells us they need to sell a house, they always tell us they have an agent. Oh, I got an agent already, whatever. Then as we start talking through the process, by the end of it, you know, they're like, Hey, by the way, um, can you just send over the agent that you recommended? Because the person that I was actually going to use, I don't really want to use or however that conversation goes. So, it really makes for a great transaction because we qualified a lot of the listing agents that we worked with. And I can statistically say this, that a hundred percent of the clients that we refer to our agents have gone flawlessly, super smooth. Communication's amazing. The hundred percent of the clients that have used their agent of choice has gone horribly wrong. (laughs) So, um, and you know, a lot of it, we've had clients close a week early and we know we're never notified. So, yeah. so our client shows up in a U-Haul van with their stuff and they didn't even tell us in the client, you know, and it's just this weird situation. Yeah. You're like, that's way different. So Jesse, do you still do deals yourself or is it just your team now? Very rarely. I mean, I do list, I try to do the listings, uh, um, you know, and I still have my, my sphere will call me, but no, we typically like Jax has a buddy moving here right now. Our agents are working with them, but no, we have so much stuff going on, you know, with this video social agency, with, um, you know, agents joining us every single day, you know, it's really hard for me to participate in real estate. And I notice like one deal really takes a lot of time away from me, but you know, for the most part, um, you know, it's our team or our agents doing it. They do that. So if you were going to, so if there's any, can you think of anything non video, non YouTube related, if you were going to go back to yourself just two and a half years ago, getting started in real estate, what would you tell yourself to, uh, to do, be ready for, to expect, what advice would you give yourself as a new agent? Yeah. Oh yeah. That's a great question. And, um, you know, I left corporate America making six figures plus, and I didn't have time to start wasting in real estate. And I think this is a big miss in a lot of agencies is that the training is, um, you know, if you're doing one training a week, dude, we don't have, people don't have, a lot of people don't have that savings or a lot of people don't have weeks to wait to start growing their business. So I, my biggest recommendation is get to where the hottest leads are today and start figuring out how to work with those um, buyers and sellers. So that's going to be open houses and for sale by owners. Cause you know that those are a willing buyer and a willing seller dial in your scripts, get to know exactly how to uh, prospect a client 
And that will really help your business grow substantially. In my first year, I did 12, 11 million, a little over $11 million. And it was all through cold calling and open houses. So I think I did a pretty good job. And then the next year I did 15 million. Uh, the thing was, is um, understanding those scripts and really building my business. And I started writing my own scripts because I knew what the power of empathy was. And I saw what every other caller was doing the exact same thing. They were always calling and using the same script that I heard a hundred thousand other people. I heard a caller one time, Brian Casella make this call. Uh, and he, he, the seller was very, very sad about a situation. Brian actually started showing a lot of empathy in that call, which I picked up from. And I said, Oh my gosh, if you actually align yourself with these people and show them empathy, understand their situation, I'm going to build a relationship that they're not used to. That's exactly what the difference was between me and everyone else. And I think that's why I was able to close so many more deals and get more listings is because at the end of the day, I was developing a great relationship, but I'd still always ask for the sell and always keep it professional. But, and same thing went with the open houses. I had a very specific open house script that I always used. I'd always take you know notes when they walked in. I would talk to them like I was already working with them. And at the end of the day, that led to me a lot of business, you know? Yeah. That's it's, it's great advice, especially when people need to hit the ground running. They don't have time to wait to get it. So focusing on the hottest leads where you have the best chance of converting and then master your craft and, uh, mm-hmm. and you can hit, it, and you did 11 million in your first year. That's awesome. Yeah. So the, so free gifts. So you guys sent over, uh, you guys uploaded just a ton of stuff into our Dropbox. That's going to be in part of our agent toolbox. If you guys go to hybendigital.com forward slash YouTube agents, you're going to see the, you know, this interview, the text, all their links, and then you can get access to everything inside the agent success toolbox. Um, but Jesse, what did you, what did you put it? What's some of the stuff people are going to see in there? Yeah. So the things that people are going to uh, see in there are going to be our ebook. And that talks about our journey from start to finish. And even today, it just finished a couple of weeks ago. So it's very, uh, it's very, um, you know, it's very new and it's very fresh and people are going to be able to hear all the real stuff because it started a while ago. We had to um, make some edits at the end just because the way things changed. We also uploaded our top five videos that you need to shoot for every market. Cool. I uploaded uh, the, it's called the 10, I call it the 10X growth strategy on really how to make um, a YouTube business work for you because we repurpose the content into blogs and into podcast. And then we also convert all of our blogs into Pinterest boards which we're getting about 50,000 hits a month on our Pinterest board. And that goes links right back to our website. So I can see the traffic's really working there. And that whole growth strategy is in the toolbox. And I think I also added our uh, vlogging uh, hyperlinks. So like what you would need to get started as a vlogger into YouTube. And I believe I also put our um, clickable software links that we use with those uh, um, like Snappa, PicMonkey, keywords everywhere. So I loaded that thing up. Uh, anyone that wants to get started today, uh, can easily do it. And if I was going back to start real estate, excluding, uh, you know, I know you said not YouTube, but I would have started on YouTube doing it the right way because Jackson, and I spent a, a lot of time and a lot of money doing it the wrong way. So we've really came here to alleviate everyone's pain points and share exactly how you can be successful unless we have buyers and clients that have gotten, um, deals after starting their YouTube video uh, videos in one week. Yeah. So Let's it like, can work fast. So you guys loaded up our toolbox with stuff. There's a bunch of stuff if people want to go do it themselves. Obviously, if people want to find you, they just need to you know search living in Portland, Oregon. They're going to find your YouTube page and all of your stuff. But you guys are also, you have your own agency now though too. So somebody can say, hey, I'm an agent in Florida. I read all this stuff. The, I mean, you guys have told us the way to do it. It's not complicated. It does take time. And so if somebody says, hey, I don't have the time. I want uh, Jackson and Jesse to do it. The, what's the best way for, the, for them to reach out to you guys? Yeah, we have our uh, website, the youtubeagents.com. Uh, you can hit us up at info at the youtubeagents.com. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, if people are a do-it-yourself type of person, we have our course. It's, it's start to finish, step by step. Uh, it includes keyword research. It includes editing, which is a huge piece. And that's where everyone gets hung up is in the editing. It's a pain. I hate editing. I can't do it. That's why Jackson uh, loves it and we get along so well. But our agency on the flip side of that can do 100% of everything for you. They will send you the keywords, the tags, the titles, the descriptions. You shoot the video, you dump it right into our Reich management system. We edit everything for you. Schedule the post, do the end screen cards, do your thumbnail. You don't have to do anything else. And we're specifically researching those keywords and titles for your area specifically. We do an onboarding process. We get to know exactly what markets you want to work in. And then we just go to work 
and get you the top performing results instantly. Man, you guys have got me so <laughs> pumped about YouTube today. The, I, I'm going to make sure that this podcast has uh, gets a million downloads compared to our other ones. Man, the uh, you guys, you guys have been great. Lots of actionable data out there. It's fun to see people from Portland, Oregon, just crushing it. And then again, the inspiration part of you guys have not been agents for all that long to be having such a big booming business right now. That's really just also just crushing it during, you know, COVID shelter in place. Everything seen, other than not being able to to go out and enjoy yeah. your Portland weather, you guys are are uh, doing just fine. Well, hey, and during this COVID situation, we are our phone calls and and emails and texts are blowing up. Everybody's at home binge watching, so all of our YouTube channels are absolutely exploding. We're getting so many calls. And actually, like Jesse said, we've put nine deals in escrow in the last week, all 100% from YouTube. So people are binge watching. Um, And there's also one more absolute gift. Go to YouTube, type in the YouTube agents. That's our channel where we literally teach you 100. There's already over 105 videos teaching you every (laughs) single thing you need to know about growing a YouTube channel for real estate. So it's all free. It's all out there. We love this stuff. And um, you can definitely learn on your own. Yeah, it is such a time right now. I mean, our podcast downloads are down. People aren't driving their car anymore. Our YouTube views and subscribers is growing, yep. right? So the people are people are consuming more video, less podcast. You guys are great. So much info in there. The, I'm sure I'll be reaching out to you to help with all sorts of different things later. The <laughs> Thanks for coming on. Yeah, Thanks man. On. All right. Rockstar Nation. Thank you for listening to Real Estate Rockstars. Listen, I need a favor. If you find this free content helpful, if you find our downloadable items from each guest helpful, please, I need you to pull out your pointing finger. Yes, the one finger that points at people and hit subscribe. Yes, subscribe. The more subscribers we get, the better we look in the ratings and the easier it is to get guests like Robert Kiyosaki, Barbara Corcoran, all the players that are on million dollar listing in the different cities. All that stuff makes it easier the more subscribers we get. So please subscribe. And listen, there's a lot of places you can leave comments. There's a lot of places you can like. We're on Facebook. We have an Instagram page. Instagram page is I am Pat Hyben. The Facebook is Real Estate Rockstars Radio. Feel free to leave us comments there. The most popular form of commenting seems to happen on YouTube. Yes, for whatever reason, it's a a very open environment. So just go to YouTube and go to Real Estate Rockstars Radio. Leave us comments there. Some of them we will read on the show. We love your feedback. So thanks, guys, and I hope you are having a great day. Oh, and also, listen, if you're going to subscribe and you haven't already left a review on iTunes, please do that too. Have a great day and thanks so much, Rockstar Nation. I really appreciate you.